crafting journey here, that journey chick on Instagram. Welcome to Crafting and Crime Daily. I hope you uh, had a great holiday weekend. Did you go to the parade? Me neither. <laughs> I sat here yesterday and struggled with the Animal Crossing settings. I had them perfect for Saturday's stream. Didn't change a thing. Um, and then when I went to stream on yesterday morning, because I thought, oh, this will be fun for a holiday. Nope, no such luck. Wouldn't, <laughs> it would not stream. The good news is I am not giving up. I played with it all day and uh, finally got my sound to work. Now the game sound didn't want to work. I'm like, what now? But anyway, <sighs> yes, um, I will figure it out by Saturday because I will be broadcasting, uh, you know, streaming live Animal Crossing on Saturday because we're gonna explore the new cafe and maybe build some more houses in the Happy Home Paradise edition. But today, I'm bringing you another episode of Corrupting and Crime. So do not forget to hit the like button. He enjoys the abuse. I, um, I had the like button find Stitch this morning. He had disappeared. The like button found him in the laundry room. Yep. Yeah, he was in the laundry room. Thank you, like button. And please consider subscribing. And don't forget the notification bell because you never know when I'm going to do like an experimental Animal Crossing live <laughs> or something better. Um, yeah, so we need to decorate my planner for the week because I didn't do that. And I can do that while I tell you about my weekend yesterday. I decided I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. Is this just like a regular pen? Can I write, um, can I write here? Like this weekend I have a wedding to go to. Wedding, oh, I don't like it. Wedding. I'm literally going to this wedding because it's in Florida. It's my niece. And I really was lamenting the fact that I couldn't go to Florida to see her, but she's having it over Zoom. You can attend by Zoom. I'm going to a Zoom wedding. How cool is that? So do you dress up for a Zoom wedding or like just like the top, just like wear a nice top <laughs> and then it's a party on the bottom? I don't know. I don't like this pen. <laughs> I didn't like this secret pack either, but we're gonna use it. Yeah, cause I didn't know what the heck those were. We're gonna make use of it. Yes, we are. Okay, so yesterday I had to get out of this house. I, like because I was trying that whole Animal Crossing thing all day long so I decided let's get out of the house and go get some coffee from Dunkin Donuts my favorite place and Tootsie her favorite thing is to go with me she loves to go for a car ride but her usual um, routine is she'll run out of the house She'll run across the street because there's an empty lot and she will, she'll go over there and pee and then she'll come back and she'll get in the car. So I get, meanwhile, I get in the car and I'm just looking to see what stickers I want to use. I'll get in the car and she'll get in the car right after me. So I get in the car, uh, you know, plug in my radio, plug in my iPhone, put it on the charger, I'm doing my Dunkin' Donut order, and I look behind me and there's a, an SUV parked in the street behind me. So I get out, because I don't see Tootsie, but then I see Tootsie at the front of her car, and the first thing I think is, oh my God, did she hit him? You know, or did she hit her, Tootsie? Um, so I see her with a leash and I'm, I'm calling Tootsie, Tootsie, come here. And she could hear me calling her. And uh, she puts the leash on Tootsie. So I'm thinking, okay, she thinks Tootsie's, you know, loose and she's just going to bring her to me. You know, she's, maybe she thinks I'm just having a hard time getting Tootsie under control. I don't know. So I see her put the leash on her and then she proceeds to get, go around her vehicle. So I'm thinking, okay, she's bringing her over to me. You know, she's just going around her vehicle. She puts Tootsie in her car. <laughs> I'm like, what? Where are you going with my dog? And she's like, oh, is this your dog? 
I'm like, yeah, she's got a sweater on. I'm standing here calling her. Uh, yeah, of course it's my dog. Oh, I thought it was the dog, the lady on the corner. I was just going to go take her back. I said, no, she's my dog. And I would like you to take her out of the vehicle. So I grab Tootsie and I get her out of the vehicle. And I'm like, where do you live around here? And she's like, oh, just over there. You know, I said, well, if my dog ever happens to be just over there, you're, I'm happy for you to help me bring her home. But first of all, Tootsie would never go just over there. No, she wouldn't. Um, she's like, well, you know, I work for the Bulldog Rescue and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, leave my dog alone. Oh my God. So, poor, and poor Tootsie, she's sitting in that SUV like, she's waiting for the car ride. I'm like, no, wrong vehicle. Like, that was so weird. Like, she's trying to kidnap my dog. Have you ever in your life heard of such a thing? Yeah. What? Bring my dog back. Crazy, huh? She obviously not a stray. She's got a, a crochet sweater on. Yeah, no. Not a stray. Oh my god. Whatever. So then we get in the car and we go get our cup of coffee. So I think Jean is pretty much recovered from the COVID. She's still doing a lot of laying around, sleeping, not, not a lot of energy, but I'm trying to energize her. I tried to get her to like go to the parade with me yesterday. She's looking at me going, what? <laughs> she doesn't get my humor. <laughs> Oh, well, nobody gets my humor. And I said, did you watch my Animal Crossing stream? And she's like, I am not watching a gaming stream. I don't get what the thrill is in watching other people play a game. I'm like, oh, okay, well, sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's not a lot to put on this one. Like yesterday I got some coffee so we can we can put a little coffee sticker next to Monday. Monday's like my coffee day. Used to be free coffee on Monday. I think they did away with that. I think that's enough of that. Uh, I don't need gas or anything. Yeah. All right. That's enough decorations. Oh, I do need to put some stickers over here like this one here I like to cover up these things because I don't do errands <laughs> I don't do errands and I don't have stuff that I need to buy so this is my list of what we're going to talk about this day in history and this is what national day it is so we're going to put away these stickers we're done. We're done. Oh, this says calls and emails. I don't do that either. <laughs> I put like what I upload here. And I do have an unboxing I filmed. I need to need to get on that and get it done. Get her done. Oh well. Get her done. Okay. Alright, we're done with that. Let's just put it all the way. Put it all the way. So last night I was cross-stitching. I've started my long dog sampler. I'm going to do a floss tube to show everybody where I'm at with the cross-stitch. Um, and I started that on this beautiful iridescent fabric. That's a 16 count. And I really do not like this. We're not going to use it. And last night I started the cata uh, this ca uh, picture that I got from the Caterpillar company. And it's like all kinds of crafting stuff, little scissors. And I, so I 
I stitched, I started in the middle. Sometimes I start in the middle. Sometimes I'll start in the left corner. So I started this one in the middle and there was a little needle, sewing needle. And then there's a piece of thread that goes through that winds up. And so I finished the needle and finished the little thread. Very cute. While I was watching the end of season, I don't know, nine or 10 of Alone. I love that show, Alone where these guys, they put 10 people out in the Alaskan wilderness. They give them 10 items and a bunch of cameras to film themselves. And whoever lasts the longest wins half a million dollars. Um, and the guy that won, he was pretty scruffy at the end, but he was, he really was the one that deserved to win. He was the most outdoorsy, the most, he was probably the best survivalist that they had out there. So yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about what national day it is. So today is National Winnie the Pooh Day. Yes, it um, commemorates the author A. A. Milnes. Am I, am I pronouncing it? A. A. Milnes. Milnes? A. A. Milne. Milne? Milnes. I'm terrible with pronunciation. His birthday. He was born in 1882 and he had a son named Christopher Robin. And Christopher Robin liked to go to the zoo to visit this bear named Winnie. And Christopher Robin also had a stuffed animal. His father would go to Harrods department store and pick up these beautiful animals. He had, that's where they, and these are on display. Um, Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore and all the characters. This is where he got the idea for these books about based on Winnie the Pooh. And the Hundred Acre Woods is really a 500 acre woods in East Sussex. And it's called Ash, Ashdown Forest. And then, so that was his inspiration for the Hundred Acre Woods. It was really a 500 acre forest <laughs> called Ashdown Forest. Um, over in England. Now, interestingly enough, according to U.S. copyright law, Winnie the Pooh is is uh, public domain. But if you follow European copyright law, it is not public domain. Um, anyway, Disney bought the rights to it uh, a while back and changed the characters up a little bit. They don't. They didn't look quite like the illustrations that Milne did. Um, in his books, but interesting. So today, read Winnie the Pooh to a loved one. Maybe I, I don't have the book, but I don't have anybody to read it to. I can read it to Jean. It did really annoy her. Yeah. I didn't know if I ever mentioned it, but she was a children's librarian. She probably knows way more about Winnie the Pooh than I do. She's going to tell me all the stuff that I didn't tell you. But you know what I am going to tell you? Crafting and Crime Daily. We're going to talk about the preliminary hearing of the defendant who drove into the Christmas parade in, back in November. So this occurred in Waukesha, Wisconsin in, in the matter of Darrell Brooks. That's the name of the fellow. So what this is, is uh, that this is a time where the prosecution is there, the defense is there, um, and all of the victims that want to speak are there. Uh, but it's a Zoom hearing. So some of them, are, they're not all physically there, but they're there on the Zoom um, in one form or fashion. Um, so this is the time where the judge reads all of the charges um, and apparently, originally, there were only six charges that stemmed from the six deaths that occurred when he drove into the Christmas parade. Well, they added on 66 more charges. Is that right? 66? Yeah, total of 70. I thought it was 75. I'm getting 72. Anyway, maybe, maybe it's 77. Well, they, they added on a whole bunch more charges. In total, there were 61 victims. Six were deceased. Then there were um, other. Then there were the charges related to uh, the people that survived but were injured. And then there were charges for him jumping bail because at the time that he drove into this crowd, he was out on bail for another charge. Yeah. 
The first six counts are intentional homicide with use of a dangerous weapon. And this could get him life in prison for each one. So that's six life, six terms of life in prison that he's facing there. So counts seven through 66 are <laughs> reckless endangerment and use of a dangerous weapon. Now use of the dangerous weapon adds additional five years onto the reckless endangerment. So for each one of those charges, they're all individual charges. For each individual charge, he faces 12 years, up to 12 years in prison, with an additional five years for the, rec for the uh, use of a dangerous weapon, which was his vehicle. Um, now, I did not add all those up. We could. Holy moly, what is that? Let's, let's look. Oh my God, <laughs> I just had it in So if he's found guilty on, on all of those counts, that's six life in prisons, six terms of life in prison, and, oh, and on seven through 66, over a thousand years in jail. <laughs> oh my God, this guy is never gonna see the light of day outside of a prison again, unless he escapes. Holy moly. So once the judge reviews, all, and then there's, of course, the bail jumping charges that were added in at the end. Uh, and I don't know what he was out on bail for to begin with. Um, but in any case, they put the, the, um, the state has to put on enough evidence during this preliminary hearing to support those additional charges. Um, so that the judge has to make a preliminary finding that there's an, enough evidence to support those charges and he will remain in jail. Um, he has, well, he, he has a bond. I don't know what the bond is. Um, and if he could make it, it's, I'm sure it's quite high and it's probably cash. Um, but if he were to get out, the judge has told him you must turn over your passport and he will have no contact with any of the victims but it's not gonna happen, <laughs> he can't get out. So anyway, uh, they put on a police officer that was uh, working that day at the parade. The state puts this police officer on the witness stand um, and he describes that he was in uniform. He had the, uh, you know, uh, he describes the uniform that he was wearing, which included a yellow safety vest that said police. And he was at, um, part of this parade route. The, I, I don't know if it was the end of the parade route, um, and then there was, you know, there were these barricades and then a few feet beyond the barricade were police cars. So you would have to get through the police cars and then through the barricades. So what this guy did was went around the police cars and then through the barricades. And at, the, at that point, he's going about five miles an hour. And so this officer was able to see him very clearly. So he identified the, the defendant as the driver of that vehicle and he described the vehicle. So he said he stood in front of the vehicle and was trying to stop him, you know, hey, stop. And the guy kept going and ran into him. So he jumps on the hood of the vehicle because he wasn't going very fast. He jumps on the hood of the vehicle and it kind of tosses him towards the driver's side of the vehicle. So he's really getting a good look at the driver and a good a look inside the vehicle. There was no one else in the vehicle with him. So it throws him off of the vehicle, at which point he gets on the radio um, to notify everyone else that there's a car on the parade route. And he, he's watching this car accelerate. So now he said at one point he was going as high as 40, 50 miles an hour through this parade route. So the first uh, thing he runs into, I believe, is this band. Um, and he's zigzagging as he's accelerating. He's zigzagging through the parade route. And but the first fatality occurs with a baseball team. There was a little base, you know, little league baseball team that he runs through. That's where they have the first fatality. Then he keeps going. Then there's a group from Capital One Bank. There's a fatality there. Then he keeps going and he runs into the dancing grandmas and there's four fatalities there. 
but he's leaving victims all along his wake with, uh, you know, from blunt force trauma, head injuries, fractures, internal injuries. I mean, you name it. And, and he did. <laughs> so, and, he, and, and he, at no time does he stop to assist any of his victims. He just keeps going. Um, he's finally chased uh, off the route by other officers. Uh, they, he's, he, there's an officer that gets three shots fired at his vehicle. It still does not stop him. He keeps going. He finally ends up parking behind a house and gets out and starts running on foot. Now they've got a police chase. They they catch him. They catch him. Uh, now he's in custody. But at no time did he go back and and assist any any of the victims. Most of the victims were on the parade route in the street. There were some spectators that were injured as well. And for all for, for all intents and purposes, it looked intentional. He was accelerating. He wasn't slowing down and he was intentionally zigzagging through that parade route. It's crazy. And when I listened to the defense ask, do the cross-examination of the, the officer, I didn't glean a defense from what she was asking. I don't know what his defense is going to be. I don't know if he's going to claim insanity or what, but I mean, he is facing the rest of his life the rest of his life in jail. Um, that will be an interesting trial. Now, that's going to be a couple of years out, I suspect, or late 2020, late this year, 2022, or early 2023. Um, I don't know. It depends on if he asks for a speedy trial. But I thought I wanted to give you kind of some of those details and, and keep that on your radar. Um, as a trial that I'll cover in the future. But the hearing was interesting. Um, yeah, it was so it's such a tragedy, such a tragedy. They did not show any of the footage. Um, in fact, the judge said, uh, thought that they might. And, and before they even started, he said, put your cameras away. <laughs> if I find out anybody filmed or took a picture of any of this footage, because um, it's quite graphic. They collected footage from uh, multiple cameras um, he said, you know, uh, that he, he had entered an order that no one should publish any of those pictures. No one. Um, so it wasn't shown. They didn't, they didn't, the prosecution didn't even show it through the witness. He just had the witness describe what he saw. And that was really enough, um, to support the charges. The victims were, would have been allowed to speak, but they chose not to. So the, the judge had said, you know, this is the chance for the victims to uh, come forward and, and speak if they would like in support of these charges. And the state, which I suspect the state had advised them not to. <laughs> um, and apparently they've elected someone to be the representative of all of the victims. So the victim representative um, on behalf of all the victims came forward and said, no, no one wants to speak at this time. I'm sure they'll speak at a later date. I'm sure there, most of them will be witnesses in the trial. <sighs> yeah. So sad, sad. And that's going to be a very long trial because you've got so many victims. Oh my God. 61 victims. Yeah. Anyway, um, today, the trial for, it looks like Chandler Halderson trial is back on. Now, as you recall, this is the uh, defendant who is charged with murdering his father and mother and then dismembering them. Well, the trial, we were like in the thick of it. Things were getting really good. Uh, and then Chandler Halderson came down with COVID. <laughs> so I, I saw that long crime went live this morning with day eight of the trial. I can't wait. You know, I want the, the jury's back. We want to get back into it. We were just getting to the good parts. Yeah. <laughs> we were finding body parts here and there. No. Um, yeah, it's an interesting trial. 
you're like, Rebecca, what are you? You're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. The other trial that's supposed to start today, uh, I don't even remember the name of it, is the gentleman that was run off the road by the other guy and the other guy gets out and the uh, defendant shoots him dead and now he's claiming self-defense. Yeah. So we'll see if that one goes live today. I'll try to cover them both. It, you know, I can go back and forth while I'm working. I'm multi-talented. Then, you know, I can play Animal Crossing here and play Ticket to Ride over here. Oh my God, Ticket to Ride. We put a challenge up and people are really doing well on this challenge. Um, it asks three questions. Uh, so go to the Ticket to Ride Facebook group. If you're part of the Ticket to Ride, this is your chance to earn extra tickets towards a prize. Go to the Ticket to Ride Facebook group. Participate in the challenge. For each question you get right, you get some tickets. And if you get the bonus question right, you get five tickets. Oh, yeah, The bonus question is hard. <laughs> I don't think I could get it. Because <laughs> Cheryl comes up with these things, not me. No, I'm like, splay that again. <laughs> what <laughs> but some people got it right so i mean i looked this morning and four people got it right four people figured it out i'm like that's so cool and you don't know what other people's you can't go and look at the comments and see what other people are saying to get the answer because you have to answer it on a google form so only cheryl and i can see your answers so you really do have to do the puzzle it's kind of cool so it's it's fun you know anyway and tonight, Cheryl and I will be doing our Yum Box stream where we uh, go to a different country every month and we see what the goodies are in the country. Sometimes they ain't so good, sometimes they are. And at the end tonight, we're going to give a try to that new Reese's Peanut Butter Cup with potato chips in it. Stay tuned. That, I have I bought one and it's been sitting there and I've resisted. I'm like, nope, you can't have it yet. Nope, don't touch it. I want it. I love Reese's. I love potato chips. So, no, we're going to try that tonight. After dinner, I'm going to have dinner first. <laughs> I'll bring a big glass of water as a palate cleanser so I can try the peanut butter cup potato chips. Oh, yum. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about this day in history. <laughs> yeah. 18th, 1778. Captain Hook goes to Hawaii. Yeah. He, he didn't discover Hawaii. He, it was just the first European voyage to Hawaii. Uh, and the natives were quite welcoming towards them and just were fascinated by all the metal that they had on board. So they were exchanging all this metal for goods, including sex. Uh, and then they would, then they took off and went back to Europe. So they came, so Captain Cook comes back a couple years later and he lands on a particular island in Hawaii where they're having this celebration. And be, because of the timing of when the ships land, all these Hawaiian people think, oh my God, these guys are gods. Oh. So they're like revering these guys that just landed uh, during this uh, Hawaiian celebration until one of the crew members dies and then they realize wait a minute these aren't gods these are just regular people so then they ran them off <laughs> so they get so they leave they've got two ships captain cook has two ships so he he gets run off he leaves well actually he gets killed Cap they kill captain cook but the two ships you know there there's enough crew members where, where they leave but they get, get like so far out to sea and they realize their ship is damaged and they have to return to Hawaii and they were greeted by people throwing rocks at them. It was not a good trip. So that's what happened this day in history, 1778. Captain Cook, James Cook, visits Hawaii. Destination, Hawaii, yeah. Interesting, huh? All right, that's the show for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could join Cheryl and I tonight for our yum destination. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's always interesting to see what kind of goodies these people are eating in these countries. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful Tuesday. If I said it was Monday earlier, I was mistaken because Monday was a holiday. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you later. Bye.